Yep. Milkstone, whom you may remember from many Xbox Live indie games. Anyway, this is their latest release for the Xbox One. Uh, I'm not going to show you the entire uh, opening, but I'll, I'll summarize it for you. Uh, basically, uh, this is Citadel, which is home of the Daedalon brothers who basically protect the realm uh, from evil. And in order to become a full-fledged uh, Daedalon brother, you need to go through the initiation. And that initiation, well, one part of it, I guess the ultimate part of it, is the Ziggurat, which is a tower full of enemies and bosses and creatures that if you survive, then you're in. If you die, then you are just dead. So good luck. Because Ziggurat's on fire. But now it's not. Alright, you pick a character. You start off with just uh, an apprentice to begin with. It's sort of balanced, if you will. Um, and you unlock other characters. I did complete the game with Kraz. Uh, Kraz was faster than Argo. And I don't know. I did better with Kraz. I don't know why. Speed is important. You have to dodge projectiles and things. And unlocking other characters is based upon killing a certain number of enemies, a specific enemy a certain number of times. But it takes a while to unlock a lot of those uh, characters. You should have fun doing it. At least I did. Anyway, as you walk around the different floors, which are randomly generated, um, you'll enter rooms with uh, a bar at the top, oftentimes, which says minions. And you have to defeat all the creatures in the room in order to progress. Uh, pick up the little yellow diamond looking things, that's experience, which is the bar at the very bottom there. And the blue, orange, and green indicate alchemy, mana, and I'm forgetting the other thing. But they're, they're, your, they're your sources of magic. You can switch weapons, and your main, your primary uh, weapon, which is the purple circle there, which regenerates. Uh, it's just your regular magic, which you don't really run out of, but it, it will regenerate rather rapidly. And along the way, you have to pick up, um, like, a portal key. A portal key opens up the boss level. So they might be near each other. They might not be. The levels are randomly generated. You don't know. Um, and as are the bosses. You won't fight the bosses in the exact same order. And I put hours into this game. And there's bosses that I, I'm still seeing, you know, new bosses. Bosses are often larger characters, larger versions of, uh, some of the creatures you fight regularly, but sometimes they're not. It just depends. And often when you do upgrade, you get a selection of cards and, uh, and abilities. And you pick what you want. You pick what's best suited to you. And if you're successful, you progress to the next level or next floor, whichever, what, or what have you. Uh, the map will be your friend. And you'll discover rooms where there are treasures where you can make sacrifices of alchemy, mana, or magic and sometimes it'll work out and you'll get things that help you sometimes the gods of this world um don't like you very much and might make your energy you know half of what it was or take away your your mana or your alchemy it just depends it's all random and there are secrets if you look for walls like i just sort of showed you um you might find one see increase your health limit there you go and there's the Milkstone logo. And what is, of course, a, a shameless plug. I love how self-aware uh, Milkstone has always been about their releases. Uh, there's some rooms that are just pretty much traps. There are rooms full of fire and spike floors and all types of hazards. But typically, there is something awaiting you that makes it worth it. At least you would hope. So what do I have here? Oh, increase your staff mana pool. And you might pick up a new staff, the Eagle Staff. Which I did not see until my most recent playthrough. So. And you continue on and fight the minions. If you hit the view button, well, what, what used to be the select button, uh, you can look at a full screen map and definitely you know, chart out where where you are and where you need to be. There are many enemy types. Um, some of the rooms have obelisks in them. I'm sorry for the degradation in graphic quality. I actually used uh, the streaming capture of this portion, so your eyes haven't gotten worse. It's just the, it's just not as crisp. I apologize for that. 
I do want to show some of these different bosses and things, but some of the obelisk rooms are, they task you with defeating usually three or four different obelisks and then all the enemies in the room, so they're pretty challenging. But the game just offers a lot of variety, it's fast, it's, it's just a lot of fun. I don't know, I really had a good time with Ziggurat, and, uh, Ziggurat, excuse me, I don't know how you're supposed to pronounce it. Um, it was a title that did come out on Steam last fall. I was not made aware of it until the Xbox One version uh, was set to come out. And you see there's a ton of different items to unlock. Like, I put hours into this thing, and there's a lot more I need to do. Uh, defeating a certain number of enemies also unlocks more abilities and more things. There's just a lot of stuff. I feel like the one thing I have not mentioned is that this is a roguelite, uh, roguelike, roguelike, I don't, I'm not sure what the line of demarcation is. Uh, when you die, you will start over from the beginning, from the ground floor. You can save, your, if you successfully complete a floor, you can save your progress and start from that floor, but I think after you pass maybe the third or fourth floor, you have that ability, but actually I'm not sure. Uh, just don't die, but, uh, but you will die. Oh yeah, you will die in this game. But the one thing is, even though you start all over again, everything's randomized, weapons are randomized. Um, the things you've unlocked will remain unlocked and be available to be placed into the world that you respawn in. So, cigarette, cigarette, however you want to say it. Have fun with it. I did. If you enjoyed this review, uh, like check out more, um, go to GameThrews.com as a podcast. You can read. I'm going to put the written portions up on the YouTube uh, description, but if you want to read the, the written portion of just about everything that's up there, uh, you can do that at GameThrews.com. Uh, two recent reviews I put up was one for Prone three on the 3DS, which I had a lot of fun with. You can read about that and watch that video. Uh, you can also subscribe, which I highly encourage. And I did put a, a video review for Axiom Verge for the, for the PS4, which uh, is a delightful retro-inspired game. So, I've rambled on enough. Uh, that's it for me. Like, subscribe, watch more videos, leave a comment, something nice, hopefully. Constructive criticism, always welcome. That's it. I'm out of here.